Hi, welcome to your tutorial on how to draw a logo in Vector. Uh, first, you're going to need to go to vector.com, that's V-E-C-T-R.com, and open up your profile and then create a new document. I've already done these steps, so now I can go to the Upload button and upload a picture of the logo I want to create. I've already downloaded the image, so I'm going to just open that real quick. We're going to work with the Apple logo because it's nice and simple, and yet it has some complex curves to it. Uh, we're going to zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see this better. All right, now I don't know why sometimes when I zoom in, I get these wonky colors. Um, I think it's because I'm zoomed out in my browser, but I'm zoomed in in the program. Um, either way, just ignore those wonky colors, please. And we're going to draw with the pen. Now, the first thing I want to do is change the color on the pen tool. Uh, it looks like in order to change the color, I have to actually create a shape and then change the color there. So I'm going to change the border here to red, so it's something that's going to stand out against my black apple. And I'll just delete that, but clicking back on the pen tool, I can now draw a red line around this apple. Um, I'm going to create points using the pen tool. And notice I do not put a lot of points in. I put the points on every corner or in the middle of a curve. By middle, I mean the highest point or the lowest point of a curve. So over here, I'll put two points just to make it a little easier to work with. And then I'll click inside. So you don't want a lot of points. Now, in order to make these actually curve, we're going to double click it. And that makes these little dots appear. These extra little dots can be used to pull and push that curve into the position that you want. Now, it can be hard to do if you don't have all the dots in place yet. So let's go ahead and work on this one. Pull it back, push it. I can I'll push it a little bit more. Back down here. Maybe pull this one up. I want to move this one over, I think. Now I'll pull this one. Pull it back out. And you can move it up and down, side to side, to try to get the effect that you want. It's not letting me do it, so I'm going to try moving it down here. No. All right. My snapping is messing me up, so I'm going to turn that off over here. Now, apparently the snapping is not the issue. Vector is just going to be restrictive about that. That's fine. We'll just move to the next one. We'll get it all where it needs to be eventually. This is going to have to come up a lot more. And then we'll pull it back down to get it where we want. That's a little bit too much. So we'll pull it back down more on this side. this all the way in and we can pull it back out with that little dot to a nice curve. Now I can push that one down into place. Pull this one in, pull it back out. Pull this one in. Back out again. But we want it definitely in more. Odd that these points seem to be kind of interplaying with each other. I did not have this problem before. This one doesn't want to move because the other one's already there. Let's see if zooming in helps us a little bit here. That is so weird. I'm going to try moving that up higher so then I can move this one. So if you're having similar problems to what I'm having, you may just have to move your points around a little bit until it lets you do what you need to do. Okay, so far, this is working out. Move this over here. Pull this side down a little bit more. This side is the only place over here where it's still not doing what it needs to. I think I may need to... There we go. We need to push this over some. Maybe I need to pull this side out. 
push this down. No. I'm going to have to pull it up. Push it back down. Let's try adding a point. If you need to add a point, click on any place that doesn't already have a point, and then you can move it. It seems to have added two points, which is annoying. So if I need to delete a point, I can always click on it and delete. This I can double click to make it straight again, and then pull these points out to make it curve. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting these points to light up in the middle. So I guess I'm going to have to add another point right there. So apparently if you double click on it, you can get handlebars, which is similar to what's used in Illustrator when working with points. All right, so now if we, so now I noticed that something was, something happened down here. Double click on that and see where did this point come from? Maybe it's because of that. Push that back in. I've done this twice today already and now I'm having trouble now that I'm on video. But this just goes to show what you have to do to troubleshoot. And just try moving these back and forth a little bit to really get them where we want them. And I'm going to have to add another point in here. and delete it and move that there. So oh, I prefer these push and pulls to the handlebars, so I'm going to just try to use those. Alright, that does look pretty good from where I'm sitting. And now I'm going to do the leaf, scrolling up. No. No. There, right there. For the leaf, you're going to start off with a basic diamond shape and then double click and add your curves. And now to group, we select both of these shapes and hit the group button. And you're going to need to add a gradient. So we'll change the color. We'll add a linear gradient on there. To change the color of your gradient, you can click on the gradient color right here and then click down here to change the first color. Change that black to red. You can change it to whatever you want. I want everyone to use different colors on this. I turn, change the white to green. And I'm done. Now when I go to export it, you can see what it looks like without that weird square shape in the middle. Uh, that's what you should see. And you hit download and then you can upload it to your Google Classroom. 
and that's the end of this tutorial so have a good day